quiz next block day. Oops, I don't know if that caught on the video there. We will have a quiz next block day. Um, so let's see, second period, that'd be Thursday for you guys. Um, and some of the worksheets will be due. Probably not worksheet four, so um, we'll do worksheets one through three will be due. Again, I try not to take it up the very next day, just in case, you know, you, I want to give you a chance to correct it and think about it and ask questions and all that stuff. So I continue to encourage you to do the homework the day it's assigned, but I'm rarely going to take it up the next day. Um, and I can tell you already what will be due the next time. It will be the rest of them, worksheets uh, four through eight. Start peeking ahead and planning ahead on on what to do. Questions on calendar due dates? I, I'll just I'm not going to hide how I grade these. Um, I'm not going to grade every single page for accuracy because I don't want to grade, you know, 70 students times three worksheets. That's 210 times 25 problems a worksheet. That's a lot. I don't know. I lost track. Um, so what I'll do is I usually pick like two or three per worksheet to grade for accuracy and I just grade them strictly on you got it right or not and so usually two if you miss both of them then you would make an eight out of ten on that worksheet which is still not terrible um, if you get them both right then you get a ten out of ten on that worksheet makes my grading go quickly uh, it provides a little bit of accountability for you um, and so it kind of splits the difference it's not completely um, completion grade where I just am looking to see that you put something on paper but nor am I checking every problem every step all the way and I usually post all the answers so if you feel like not giving you partial credit is harsh and be like well I posted all the answers there's no reason not to make a 10 out of 10 on almost all the assignments so that's how I'll grade it um, again worksheets 1 through 3 will be due next block day and then the rest of the packet will be due on test day. All right, let's answer some questions. And I first have to apologize, I guess is the best word, because I should have told you to omit number 31. It was the worst one on there, so I apologize. If you tried it, if you got it, great. But you had to foil out and not just FOIL, but like multiply out x plus h cubed, which which is not impossible. It's just ugly. Yeah, it takes forever. So the, the, we would stop at the squareds for the, the difference quotient. If you did it, x cubed plus, but that's because I know how to cube and done it enough times. So apologies on 31, omit that one, don't worry about it. Now, other than 31, what questions do you have? Can you go over 12? Number 12. Yes, I can. Yeah, don't you love those one, two, three type statements? Forces you to do three problems, even though it's one problem. Math teacher's getting tricky on you. Uh, let's see, f of negative 5. You know what, let's back up and review piecewise functions in general. The first thing we'll use is the, is the right-hand column. And I think this is what's confusing about piecewise. Like, whoever devised this, they put them in the wrong order, in my mind, because you use this column first, and then you use this column second. Uh, this is the if column, and then this is the then column. So if x is less than negative 1, then we'll use 2x minus 4. If x is greater than negative 1, then we use x squared plus 3. But we only pick one path. We pick our path and then don't plug it in both. Plug it in whichever one we're supposed to. Um, so I'm going to call this branch A and this branch B just to, have, just to have a way to call them something. So if x is negative 5, that's less than negative 1. So we're going to use branch A for this one. So 2 times negative 5 minus 4, that would be negative 14. And I don't do anything with x squared plus 3, because negative 5 is not greater than negative 1. 
So statement one is true. Statement two, f of negative one. Let's see, negative one is equal to negative one, so I can again use branch A. So two times negative one minus four. That would be negative six. So two is not true. And then f of four, well, four is bigger than negative one, so I'll use branch B for this one. Four squared plus three, 16 plus three is 19. So yep, that one's true. So I'm looking for one and three, and that would be answer choice D. Oh yeah, we just worked three problems in one there. 15. Which of the following is false? Okay, is a function. Okay, with equations, I'm really looking for y squared, y to the fourth, y to some even power. That would mean it's not a function. Because eventually I would get down to y equals plus or minus the square root of something. So I don't have to solve it all the way out. As soon as I see y squared, it's not a function. Because eventually we're going to land at plus or minus, which means one x value is giving me two y values, and that doesn't work. So a looks OK, because there's only one y. So that one's good. y cubed is good. y to the fourth, I think there's our problem because we would end up with plus or minus something. y to the fifth is fine. So c is the one that's not a function. Or rather, 30. Well, did I go too fast? Anything on 15? Number 30. OK, a good old difference quotient. So job one is to find f of x plus h. Job two is to plug everything in and then hope we don't make any mistakes after that. So in place of x goes x plus h. And let the messiness begin. Hopefully you've foiled this enough times where you don't have to write it out and foil it and collect like terms and waste you know three lines of space to get to x squared plus 2hx plus x squared plus h squared minus x minus h plus 1. Okay, so let's see if I use the same color scheme as yesterday. So in for f of x plus h, I'll put that in red x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus x minus h plus 1. All of that's f of x plus h minus f of x, x squared minus x plus 1. And then all of that over h. Yes. But wouldn't you be subtracting the, the x and h? Wouldn't that be the just minus x plus 1? Where are you talking about for f yeah, of x? No, so for the last section of the red part, okay. minus x minus h plus 1. Wouldn't huh? that be minus x plus 1? Because doesn't x equal... X plus H, or well, I've substituted X plus H in, mm -hmm. and then I distributed the minus sign. Yeah. So minus X minus H. So then why'd you do it again? Minus okay. X minus H. So he's he's and then the green part is F of X. Maybe that's. So, so then H is minus X minus H plus one. So all of this red is G of X plus H. And the green is g of x. Okay. 
Better? Yeah. And now I look for things to cancel. And you remember the shortcut, not the shortcut, but maybe the check or hint in here is that everything in g of x is supposed to cancel. So minus x squared and plus x squared. That looks like a minus x, but remember it's really a plus x because of that minus sign. So plus x and minus x and minus 1 and plus 1. All right, uh, I guess if you were really brave and daring, you could reduce by h's now, but I want to rewrite because I don't want to do too many things at once. So what's left is 2hx plus h squared minus h all over h. And then I can reduce by h in all of those. So 2x plus h minus 1. Blech. I guess the good news is that's as hard as we'll make them since we're not going to give you cubics like in 31. So if you could figure out 30, you'd be good because the rest of them are just like x squared is the highest power you're going to have to do. 28th, I will. The domain. Okay, this one's a little bit um, tricky, misleading almost, because the only thing we're worried about with domain is, let's see, we said square roots, um, whatever's in the square root has to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, fractions, the bottom can't be zero. So that's the only thing I'm worried about. Well, definitely no square roots, so I'm not worried about that. There is sort of a fraction, but the only thing down there is 5. And 5 is never going to be 0. So there's nothing to worry about. This is going to be all real numbers for the domain. Again, the, the top will factor, but I don't care about factoring the top. It does have a fraction, but the bottom will never be 0, so it doesn't doesn't matter. So it's all real numbers. I don't know what has no domain. I don't even know what that's like. I had to come up with a fourth answer, so let's throw something on there. Um, 24. 24. Okay, another domain problem. Well, I wish the directions were a little clearer, but it's in the domain section, so I think we can assume that's what it wants us to do. Square root means whatever's under the square root has to be greater than or equal to 0. So 5x greater than negative 15, x greater than or equal to negative 3. That's sort of the answer. Um, I want it in interval notation. Some people for a simple one like this, might jump straight to interval notation and say, well, it's negative 3 to infinity. The reason I was confused is on the answer because it said it was 3, not negative 3. Oh, yeah. That means I messed up the answer key. I was confused. I was really confused. Well, no wonder you're confused because I messed it up. So apologies I get for going fast on the answer key. Did I make any other mistakes on the answer key? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Okay, good questions all.